Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is part two of my tutorial series on how to use stable diffusion to create AI images. If you've missed part one, I'm going to drop you the links to the playlist and everything else relevant down below, so go and check that out. In this video, I want to talk about how to create your prompts and how to control all the parameters in stable diffusion to create actually nice looking AI images. When you're first getting started, it can be a little bit overwhelming and confusing. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. In the Stable Diffusion Web UI, if you're using the Stable Diffusion XL model, be sure to set your resolution to 768 by 768 or higher for the best results. Now, your most important parameter is the prompt. You have a positive and a negative prompt. The positive prompt describes everything that you want to see. And in here, you can describe what you want your AI image to look like. You can describe the subject, the environment, the camera use, the lighting, the style, the art medium, and add anything that you want. Don't write a novel here. Comma separated keywords generally work best. Now, as you can see, I do love cats, so let's try and see what we get. And that's pretty cool right off the bat. Now, in the negative prompt, you can describe all of the things or the qualities about your image that you don't want to see. The negative prompt will suppress those elements in the final image, so let's go and check this out. And this actually looks really cool. Now, before we move on, scroll down a little bit, and below the generated image, you'll find the generation parameters, which describe all of your settings that you use to generate this image. Now, in here, find the seed, copy and paste this value, and place that into your seed parameter. And that will ensure that Stable Diffusion will use the same noise image as an input. So if you leave all of the other parameters the same, this will generate the same image. You can also click this little green recycle arrow icon and that'll load the seed value from the last generated image. Let's hit generate. And sure enough, that is exactly the same image that we generated before. And the reason that is important is because I now want to talk about the sampling, which is the actual process that Stable Diffusion uses to turn a bunch of random noise into the final image. First off, you get to select the sampling method, which defines the method that will be used to turn that noisy image step by step into your final result. Now in here, you'll find a bunch of different names. Just try them out and play around. Some of them are faster, some of them are slower, some work better with people, some better for landscapes. Also do note that some Samplers do look quite similar. So if I select Eula and regenerate my image, that actually looks pretty much like the same thing. However, if I select something like DPM plus plus Keras and regenerate that, that actually gives me quite a different image, even though I haven't changed any other parameters and I'm using the exact same seed value. Next, let's talk about sampling steps. This is the number of steps that Stable Diffusion will take from that initial completely noisy image to get towards that final image that you specified via your prompt. Now, if you lower your sampling steps to one, you'll actually just get a single step, just a pretty noisy image. And as those steps increase, as you ramp up this parameter, you get a less and less noisy image and one that looks closer and closer to that final output that we got at 20 steps. Now, at a certain point, it kind of looks pretty much the same and, you know, Stable Diffusion might just be pushing a couple of pixels around here and there, so it won't make too much of a difference. And there's definitely a point of, you know, maximum ROI where increasing the steps just takes longer but won't actually get you a nicer result. So play around with this. Usually between 15 and 20 tends to work pretty well for me. Now, if you enable high res fix, Stable Diffusion will generate a smaller image and then upscale that and regenerate a much higher resolution image. Now, in here, you can specify the method used for the upscaling itself. Again, lots of options in here. I personally like ESRGN underscore 4X works pretty well for photorealistic things, in my opinion. High res steps defines how many steps Stable Diffusion will try to use for that high res image. If you leave this as zero, it'll default back to the steps you've specified in your base parameters. And denoising strength actually defines how much new noise Stable Diffusion introduces as it upscales that image. The more noise you add, the more it will differ from your base image. So I'm going to set this to 0.06 because I want the final high res image to be pretty close to my low res 768 by 768 output cat image. And that looks super cool. And it is a really high detailed resolution. Let's disable the high-res fix for now and talk about the refiner. Now in here, you'll find a bunch of different parameters, one of them, which is to select a checkpoint. So what the refiner does, it essentially generates the image up to a certain point and then switches to a different model, a different checkpoint to complete the last steps in that generation process. And the idea is that for those last steps, you use an AI model or a checkpoint that's been trained to refine things. So like details of hands or eyes or fur or just make the image just a little bit nicer. Uh, again, I won't go through all of this. I'll drop you some links down below if you want to download the SDXL refiner model for stable diffusion, and then you can select that. The switch at point just determines at which point in that generation process it'll switch to the refiner checkpoint. But let's just close this for now and move on. 
Within height, I hope I don't even have to talk about. So let's talk about batch count. You can generate batches of images so you don't have to click once for every single image. I'm going to leave the batch count on one, but I'm going to increase the batch size to five. And let's just make sure we clear out the seed. So you can either set the seed back to minus one or hit this little dice icon here. It will automatically set it to minus one. So you get a nice random set of images. And stable diffusion will give us a batch of five images that we can review and look through. And all of these look pretty cool in my opinion. CFG is classifier free guidance. And you can think of this parameter as the artisticness or the freedom that you give stable diffusion. A low CFG value means that stable diffusion doesn't really have to stick too closely to your prompt. It can kind of go off and do its own thing. So let's set this to two and regenerate a batch of five images. Now it's still kind of what we're looking for, but the style is different. The images just look a little bit odd and I'm not sure what this scary bunny cat thing is here. So let's close that down and let's ramp the CFG scale up to 12. So we're now telling Stable Diffusion to really stick to our prompt, to try to get our prompt as exactly as it can. And that looks much more like what I actually specified in my words that I wanted. So again, play with the CFG scale. I generally found that a scale between six to 11 tends to work well. If you go too high, it can look a little bit you know, overdone is like stable diffusion really try to hammer that image in. If you go too low, you just get random stuff. But yeah, play around with it. It does depend on which checkpoint you use within stable diffusion as well. Now the seed we already talked about, there's this little extra checkbox here over on the right hand side, which will expose some more detailed parameters of how that seed gets varied from image to image. Won't go into too much detail, not super necessary. So let's just skip right over that. And the last parameter is a script and you can download different scripts and extensions from the web. They essentially processes that get applied once your image is generated. And there's all sorts of things like depth mapping or you know just color ramping things. And again, I'll drop you some links down below if you wanna check that out. For this video, that's probably not super relevant. But yeah, just play around with it. You're going to get some really weird results, but you learn along the process of how things hang together and how to get the best out of stable diffusion. And that's all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you get notified when I release new videos. It really helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. Any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down below the video. And with that, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.